Since we recorded the rest of the section about the first light in the universe, there has been a new and somewhat controversial result, the edges anomaly. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this update video. Now, this is a claimed to be a detection in 21 centimeter radio of the realization of the universe. So let's go and explain what they mean by that. Now remember that 21 centimeter radiation, if you've got a hydrogen, neutral hydrogen, it's got spin of its uh, proton and spin of its electron. They can either be in the same direction or opposite, nothing in between for various weird quantum mechanical reasons. If they're the same, it's slightly higher energy than if they're opposite. So if you've got an atom where they're pointing the same direction and it flips down, it emits 21 centimeter radiation. If, on the other hand, you get one that's opposite and some radiation comes along, it can be absorbed. So you can maybe see 21 centimeter in emission if it's jumping down, or absorption if it's jumping up. And this has, of course, been used very widely to map galaxies and things since the 1950s. But the basic idea here is rather than looking in a particular direction, you look average of the entire sky. If the entire sky was full of hydrogen, then you might see an enormous great peak in the average spectrum at 21 centimetres. That's if the universe wasn't expanding. If it's expanding, you'll see a peak at 21 centimetres from the nearby gas, and maybe 22 centimetres from the slightly redshifted gas, and 23 centimetres beyond that. So what you'll get is radiation from 21 centimetres all the way to the side. That's if there was no absorption. But in reality, things are a bit more complicated. We don't see all this 21 centimetre absorption because most of the universe is ionised. The electrons have been ripped out of the atoms, so there's no spin flip to go on. And you've also got to worry about the microwave background radiation. There's an enormous amount of microwave background, a billion microwave background photons for every hydrogen atom. And people have done some calculations, and here's what they think should happen. In the very early universe, you've got this huge number of microwave background photons flying past the occasional hydrogen atom. If they fly past the hydrogen atom like this, they will be absorbed and excited up. So that will cause a dip in the light. The atom up on the top, however, will eventually flip downwards and re-radiate it, giving a, a, a emission line. And normally, if these things are all in equilibrium, the emission and absorption should cancel out. So actually you should see nothing more than the normal microwave background spectrum, or the hydrogen there is not having any effect. And then at some lower redshift when the hydrogen is ionised, it still has no effect. However, there is a rather curious physical effect called the Oethusen field effect. If you've got most neutral hydrogen, and you have some source of ultraviolet, like a new galaxy or a quasar, the ultraviolet will fly around and it'll hit hydrogen atoms and knock the electrons up to higher energy levels. So not merely flipping like this, but right the way up to a higher energy level. And then they might jump down. And the funny thing is, at the lower energy level they might have been either like this or like that. When they're knocked up and come down, that might change them. And in fact, if you do the maths, it turns out that for plausible conditions in the early universe, what this does is it tends to flip hydrogen from the most excited state to the least excited state. So what this means is, let's say you have a cloud of hydrogen bathed in the microwave background, but now you're injecting some ultraviolet. If the ultraviolet wasn't there, you'd be getting some absorption and some emission. But with the ultraviolet coming in, it pushes more of the hydrogen into the low energy state, and means you get more absorption and less emission. So what you'd expect to see is a trough in the spectrum of the whole sky occurring at whatever redshift this first ultraviolet comes out. Well, here's a theoretical prediction. These are the redshifts, so this is assuming it happens at redshift about 16 or 17. And what you see, if you average the spectrum over the entire sky, is a dip, a fairly broad dip, maybe a little bump on the low end depending on the exact details of what you calculate. Now, pointing in any one direction, you're not going to get anything like a measurable signal. You have to integrate over the entire sky so to get enough signal to pick it up. And that's what the Edges experiment has done. This experiment, located out back west in Australia, 
uh, part of the trouble is 21 centimetres by the time it's red shifted a bit is right in the middle of frequency bands we use for AM radio, TV, all sorts of things. So anywhere near civilization, you're going to get completely jammed and drowned out. So you need to set up your equipment somewhere very big and flat and empty. And Outback Australia is big, flat and empty in spades. And basically, it's listening to everything above it. It's got a big ground plane, there's some complicated electronics in the middle, but basically it's a very simple looking device, though the electronics is anything but simple. And it measures the spectrum of how much intensity of radio is coming in at a whole bunch of wavelengths uh, over the possible wavelengths of interest. The trouble is that the emission they're trying to pick up from the microwave background being absorbed is swamped by emission from our own galaxy, from various forms of interference, uh, all sorts of other foreground crap. So you have to subtract that all off with great precision. Also, the ionosphere is quite a big problem. Uh, the Earth's atmosphere, the ionosphere that bounces radio waves around. But anyway, these authors have tried very hard to deal with that. And here's what they get. Here's the raw data, which is totally dominated by the foregrounds of emission from their own galaxy. Then you subtract that off and you get this. And you subtract more things off from careful modeling to get rid of all the foregrounds and you apparently get a dip that looks like this between 17 or 85 megahertz. So here's another plot from their paper showing this dip after all the analysis. So what they're claiming is that this dip, which is very small, it's a change of about half a degree in the temperature of the radiation coming in, is caused by this ultraviolet very early in the universe flooding out and knocking all the hydrogen atoms down into the lower energy state so they absorb the microwave background rather than being in balance. So if true, this is very exciting. We've actually seen the first light in the universe, not directly from the quasars or galaxies, but by the effect of all the ultraviolet photons flooding out from them. Is it real? Well, there are a few doubters. The shape more or less matches what was predicted by the theory, but it's twice as deep. It's more absorption than anyone should have expected. Now that could be saying that there's something wrong here, or it could be saying that maybe there's some extra physics. For example, there are some current papers circulating suggesting that some strange interaction with dark matter could produce this. There are also papers saying that this is not valid. Uh, there's one paper claiming that the way that the model subtracted was a bit fishy. Uh, if you try enough playing with the data, you probably get anything you like. And they claim that maybe uh, the choices of the foreground to remove are a bit artificial. And maybe that's what's caused this nice plot. It's not real, it's just people have played around with the data long enough. And they obviously deny this. Another person claimed that actually there's an effect caused by the ground underneath that's causing that small dip in the spectrum. Anyway, as of right now, it's still somewhat controversial, but potentially we could have seen the first light in the universe by its indirect effects on 21 centimetre radiation.